Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome back to F1 2017. We have been absent from this game for about a month, and mostly that's due to the release of the Assetto Corsa Ferrari 70th Anniversary Pack, which, of course, is a whole lot better than the entire content of the F1 2017 game. However, F1 2017, it's gotten... Shall we say a gentle update since its release? They've fixed a couple of little bugs, they have updated some graphics, mostly in the displays, but uh, it's time to give it another go. We're having another classic race here today. It's our second outing in the Renault R26, and I want to do a classic race from cockpit view in all the classic cars, so... We did a race in the R26 before, but it was from the T-Cam. That was before I had really fine-tuned my settings to make cockpit driving a little bit more tenable, and now I have done that, so let's go out and set a qualifying time. One shot, of course. It is a sunny day here down under. X4. Delta being shown to the Ferrari F2004 in front. I am not anticipating being able to fight with the F2004s, although stranger things have happened. Basically doing a good job of holding weather here through Sector 1. Why are we in Australia? Well, I like Australia. That's why we're here. I know the next Grand Prix is the United States Grand Prix from Circuit of the Americas. It's a really nice circuit there, but uh, I don't like it very much. Just, eh. The first sector, and really the second sector, it's too Mickey Mouse. It's stop, start, stop, start, long straight, and then a hairpin. It's a, it's a tilt -cadrome really shown us the best racing in its brief tenure on the calendar, but uh, I don't know, 2017 has been full of surprises. Baku, for example, the most boring circuit in the world, gave us a thrilling race, so perhaps the U.S. Grand Prix will be worth watching. However, uh, I'm not racing there. At least not right now, obviously. And that's off. All in all, though, not too bad on this run. Of course, we have nothing to say to the F2004, but to the line, what is our time? 28.183, I believe I saw. And that's good for P9. That is P9 overall. We are a class one car. With qualifying complete, oh, all yes. that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. All right, so the only guy behind us is the other R26. We've got the MP423s immediately in front, and by immediately in front, I mean exactly right there. Have a look at that. That is a very close margin. The overall results, well, we have no Class 1 guys in the backfield. Of course, that is now all Class 2. The McLaren MP413s might be able to give us a little bit of a challenge in terms of straight line speed. However, through the corners, we should be vastly superior. I would like to fight up for P6 if possible, maybe with one of the F2002s. We shall see, but those F2004s and RB6s are most likely unassailable. Join us in a moment for the race. Welcome to the grid here in Melbourne. It is another bright, sunshiny day here, so we are not worried about the weather. It should remain stable for the duration of today's race. We're starting P9 overall. We'll see if we have any answer for the guys in front of us. Let's get to it. Formation lap about to get on the way. Doing the next bird on the power unit cycle, so let's concentrate on bringing tires and brakes up. Getaway is going to be okay. Going to build some brake and tire temps. I have to say, I know it's all pre-scripted radio chatter, but I don't like it how they call the engines in these classic cars a power unit. Things weren't so buzzwordy, PC, politically correct, back in the day, so uh, don't make it that way. Leave my impressions of the past untouched by modern influence. Thank you very much. Anyway, we've got some good core temp now building in the brakes. That's just what the doctor ordered. Tire temps will be coming up.
again, I would like to get up toward the front and maybe challenge the F2002s. Uh, I think that might be a little bit of a tall order, but we shall try. Let's get our settings set up for the start. Mix three. Brake bias is where I want it. We'll uh, open up the diff a little more. And, uh, yep, going off there in true Juan Pablo Montoya fashion at the uh, 06 Australian Grand Prix. He spun on his way to the grid. He got onto the start finish straight and then uh, he kind of pirouetted as an MP46 drives through us there. <laughs> and we drive through one of the Ferraris and we return the favor to the 46. We drive through the other Ferrari. We drive through the 14B and the 413. And there's the grid slot. All right. That was eventful. All right, so clutch in, first gear is up. And off we go, folks. Let's keep our nose clean into this notoriously tight turn one. There's one of the M2002s, ah! All right, I said let's keep our nose clean through turn one. We did, we're punted off. I get a warning for that. I get another warning for that second collision. We've got a yellow flag. Clear. All right, that was a disaster. Let's fight our way back up through the field now. Let's uh, take stock of our damage, just that front wing flap. And let to believe it's completely gone. Look at that understeer. I know the tires are cold, but still, that's atrocious. All right. Uh, okay, box, box, box. We're adjusting the strategy. We're following me into the pits here. The front runners aren't going to have to stop at all. We tough it out. That's what you call a Melbourne sandwich. Really don't think there was much I could have done to avoid that, in all honesty. But through these high speed corners here, that's. Yeah, look at that. I've got no grip. Well, uh, I think we should pit, honestly. It's early enough. We can put in some quick laps that perhaps, just perhaps, we're going to be able to do something. So. Uh, let's make sure they're going to repair the wing. They're going to put the dry tires on. Larson's already scampering off into the distance. It's about speed. All right, so that is P20 of 20. The only car to dive into the pits. That's bad. Yep, there's the damaged wing. Note the right hand flap is missing. Got new tires on. And yes, it's going to be a lonely day now. Hooray! Pit strategy complete. See these tires through to the end now. See these tires through to the end. Well, I guess I don't have much choice, do I? Okay, well that took the air out of our balloon immediately. Can we get anything out of this day? Fuel Delta is plus 2.8. And I have a healthy car once again. see what we have in store for us. It's still early enough to where if I put in some good consistent lap times I might be able to claw my way up through the field, but we are about 25 seconds behind the guys at the end of the field. So perhaps I'm a little optimistic with that projection. We shall see! At any rate, we're in the wonderful R26. It is a great little car. The R-Factor CTTP 2006 mod. Yep. This car was one of my vices back then in those days. And of course, F1 Championship Edition on the PS3. Yeah. This was the car to be in in career mode if you could get it. 13 seconds back. Sorry there. There's a 
one of the four fours. Just aim for some consistent times and see what we can do. We are already starting to catch the tail end of the class two guys. Yep, and there he is. Roth, one of the RB6s, that's fastest lap. 128 something. Coming up to overtake the four fours pretty shortly. Another couple of corners, really. Look at the closing speed we've got here. Hold your line, pal. Thank you. All right, so we're not stone last anymore. Progress. We're about to be up two spots. That was a little squirrely. Nine three seven three on that last lap. Right. Settle down here for a quiet afternoon. Four six up ahead. How's the car looking? Wear rates are nominal on the tires. healthy the engine is a little hot. Look at this train. You can get all kinds of track position here. Fuel Delta is plus two. We are still running in mix three. Hey, hey, I'm here, pal. Sorry, now out of the race. Uh, it ends in tears. Guess not, thankfully. Wow, look at how much they slowed down for that corner. Quesada is now out of the race. That's one of the F2002s. We're going to beat an F2002. That's just what I wanted. Yes. That, the 4-6 pulling away slightly down the straight. They're certainly not slow in a straight line. V8 versus V12 there. V8 versus V12 yet again here with Ferrari 412. However, into the braking zone. Uh, was that really necessary? He just turned into me. Hey, Flavio, get on the horn to Charlie. Did you see that? Here, that's Kisana, that's the F2002. Goodbye! Okay, clear. See, a safety car would be very cool. Now the P12 overall, we've got Clark ahead. Wait for a gap to come across. It's an 11 second gap, 11.789. Well, we'll see what we can do with that. Fuel Delta is plus 1.6. We are going to have to turn the engine down at some point. Not quite yet, but soon enough. Lap in the books, it's 131.066. So we're negotiating lap traffic there. No, not lap traffic, but slow traffic. Jeez, I'm not used to running in the back. I think slow guys are lapped down, they're not. Five and a half seconds. Wow! We picked up six seconds and half a lap. That's something. Okay, the gap behind is 9.8 seconds. 
And that's the Takuma Sato line there. I think in 2007 or something he did that. Super Gurry. The opening stages of the Australian Grand Prix. Now being an F1 fan is strange because you watch all of these races and you're able to separate them in your memory year by year because, the, yeah, mostly because of the way the cars look. But uh, you remember little moments that were just a split second in the TV coverage, yet they stay with you for some reason. Takuma Sato going off there in Sector 2. It was completely inconsequential, but somehow I remember it. Pretty sure that was 2007. Gosh, how many races have I watched? <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting question. My first race was Monaco 2005. And I, I can't say definitively that I've watched every single race since then, but I've certainly watched the vast majority of them, certainly upwards of 90%. So, how many races have I watched? 150? Something like that? Yellow flag. Yellow flag, I'll overtake him here. Got a slow car. That's Moreno. Oh, okay. And Forrest. Okay, everybody just stack up. Why don't you? <laughs> okay, you need to give that position back. That yeah, I was going to say that was illegal. Where's Clark? There he is. I wasn't sure who was actually slow there. VSC, all right. The SC, let's turn the engine down while we can. Misser is out of the race. All right, well that was a little intense. I wish he would deploy the actual safety car. Cut down everybody's gap to zero. Moreno pitting. VSC ending, we're going green. Maintain positive delta until the green flags. Maintain positive delta until the green flags, and then you take the delta down immediately. Anyway, back under green flag conditions. Fuel delta is plus 1.2. We're up into P10. One more slot, and then we're up where we started. Clark, I'm here. Look at that, just like I predicted. Straight line speed. 413 and the R26 are pretty much an even match, but we are superior in the corners. Now into P9, this is where we started. Murray is up ahead of us, he's in one of the 14 Bs. We have a caution someplace. We're not. B runner a little bit higher than he should. Certainly that's due to the attrition. Alright, in the slipstream. What's that V10 there? Very nice. There's P8 for us. We're up one spot from our starting position. We do not know where P7 is. I assume he is very far up the road, considering I can't see him on the little track map overlay. We'll get a gap when we finish Sector 1 in a couple of seconds. And they don't quite leave the gaps up on the screen long enough for you to read them, but 36 seconds. That is a problem. They need to leave the gaps up for a little bit longer than like one and a half seconds because Invariably, you're in a corner when the gap comes up, and you can't exactly look at it. But anyway, we're working on 9 of 15. We 
are at least amongst the class one guys again. And no matter what happens, we are going to be classified ahead of one of those F2002s, so mission accomplished in a very circuitous roundabout fashion. Fuel Delta is plus 0.6. Let's go into mix two. Six point two in front. We're probably not going to be able to do anything about that unless we have some more attrition, which is not likely here coming to the closing phases of this race. Tires are going off a little bit. We're still okay. And component status: everything looks good. Temperatures are nominal. The engine's cooled down. That's good. component that wears on these classic cars is the gearbox. There we are showing at 6% wear. I don't know if it's possible to have any failures in these. I've never experienced one. Five laps of fuel remaining and about five laps of racing remaining. That is right on target. 28914, personal best. Getting a little bit dark here. Could almost use some headlights on this thing. For sector one with all of the really densely packed trees. I do have to say, this is a pretty crazy place for a Grand Prix. I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. But I mean, you've got... This is a public park. I mean, if you live in Melbourne, you could go here at any time of year, except for the three, four days that everything is in Grand Prix mode. But these are public roads. And uh, it's, it's really, really cool. If you've, if you've... Either if you've been here or if you've seen videos of this place when it's not all dressed up before, it's, uh, it's actually a very idyllic, sort of picturesque setting. And uh, the fact that you've got F1 cars just pounding around here at ridiculous speeds, it's, uh, it's quite extraordinary. It's not quite as crazy as Monaco, but it, it's, it's, in the, it's in a similar league. And I would say in many ways it's even stranger than Monaco because of the speeds that these cars can get here. Lap 12 of 15, 128.9 dead. seconds. So we are gaining slightly, but not nearly at the pace we would need to do any passing. So it looks like we are going to be last in the Class 1 finishers. One mistimed moment right at the beginning of the race. It's all it takes to spoil the afternoon. We are faster than the guy in front, but we are very far arrears. Going to be coming up to lap one of the last two guys sometime on the next lap. There's three laps of fuel remaining. Three laps of fuel left and three laps of racing left. Awesome. Mr. 
consistent. 32 thousandths of a second down on the previous lap time. The engine up for a moment. Fastest lap for Larson, a 126.415. My best lap, a 128.9. So there's your, there's your speed differential between the F2004 and the R26. Trust me, I'm well aware of that, boys. Saving a little bit of fuel. Turn the engine up when it comes time to lap this back marker. I believe. Indeed it is. Spikalski. And of course the guy who's got a name that ends in ski has a Polish flag next to his name. Stereotype much, Cody's? Larson, another fastest lap. She may lap us <laughs> pretty soon. She's about two seconds a lap quicker than we are. Anyway, one and a half laps to the end here. Our classic race in Australia with the R26. The cars performed very nicely all day. The only problem really was just uh, some people being a little bit over optimistic at the start. And well, I got caught up in a Melbourne sandwich. So it's part of the course, as they say. Had that not happened, where may we have finished? Well, really it's hard to say. I, Maybe P5, but I don't really know. One lap of fuel remaining and one lap of racing remaining. We do have some lap traffic up ahead. I'd like to stay away from them if at all possible. Larson says fastest lap on her final lap. She has won the race. So we do not go a lap down. stay out of the way of these back markers. Wasn't expecting to be dealing with back markers after the way this race started, but okay. I'll take it. Looks like we've consolidated P8. Even though it's not where I want it to be, uh, I still don't want to give myself the uh, commentator's curse. I don't want to celebrate too soon, even though this isn't a particularly celebratory occasion. Mr. Snow's there getting the blue flags, as you can see. Flashing up into the approach of the corners. Let me through. Thank you. And the other lapped traffic shall not be an issue. V8. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Not bad. Not bad, could have been worse. Could have been a retirement. So we, we avoided that at least. Final standings in a moment, but first the podium ceremonies. Here come our winning drivers then, out onto the podium at the end of a thrilling Grand Prix. The drama and excitement are over, and it's time to let it all sink in. Congratulations to our top three today.
Very, very cool. I do like these podium sequences. Looks like the two RB6s are rounding out the podium there, and the F2004 held them off for the win. That's it for today's Indeed, that is Three what has occurred. Today, it's goodbye, and see you again next time. Really cool. We did not manage to beat our rival R26. Oh well. However, I am very, very vindicated to see that Letourneau there is in P4, and he has been beaten by both of the RB6s. That's good. For those of you who don't get that reference, Letourneau was the guy who illegally overtook me behind the safety car when I was racing the F2007 at Monza, and I would have won the race had he not done that. So I hate that little guy in his virtual personage. So if I ever get the opportunity in one of these videos to take him out, I'm going to do it and I don't care about the consequences of that action. However, going to the overall results, we're in P8. We're up one spot from where we started. We are, regrettably, the final class one finisher. And uh, yeah, then we go into the class two guys. The only class one guy who did not finish the race is Julian Quesada there in the F2002. Not quite sure what happened to him. I do reckon that perhaps it was an incident with Sari in the MP44, but who knows? That will forever remain a mystery to the gaming universe. However, that's my return to F1 2017. Hopefully you guys found that one enjoyable. We're going to be doing a couple of more videos of F1 2017 in the next few days, but, uh, well, I don't really have any long-term plans for this game. I've, I've told you what I think of it, and I've reevaluated what I thought of it, and I, I like it for what it is, but it's it's not a sim. It certainly doesn't replace a set of Corsa or iRacing or Artifact 2 or any of that stuff, so it is fun. I will say that, but that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you've enjoyed that one. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. Ferrari Man 601 saying thank you, and we will see you soon.